that's one reason in Yiddish it was so popular. People realized that this was about truth. It was about love, even though the love in it is between two women. I mean, 1907, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, and it's interesting because, I mean, this really resonated in 1907. It was considered outrageous in 1923. Right. But look at how it resonates today. You know, we really have people does. who are trying to ban books, Constantly. right? Welcome, Jody. Yeah, hello. Thanks. I'm, I'm really excited to be here, and I'm so pleased to be, you know, somehow in, involved in this project. What a great project! It, you know, as we'll as it will unfold during our conversation, this play is shocking and radical. You know, um, it it was kind of an outrageous play, even in 1968. In fact, here's a little known fact: um, we produced it in Madison. I forget how many performances there are, but we actually came to Milwaukee to do a performance of this play at the Jewish Community Center, the old center that was on Prospect. And we actually were picketed by no. people in the Jewish community who thought this was too outrageous and obscene a play um, to be performed by the Jewish community in Milwaukee. Of course, you know, as usual, that just meant we had even more people coming to the right. performance because they wanted to see what this was all about. The play that's going on at Chamber Indecent um, is right. really a play about doing this play. That's right, you know, and it's very, it's such an exciting project and I'm so excited that the Chamber Theater is doing it. You know, it's about theater, it's the power of the arts, it's about um, freedom of speech, it's about all the things that went into it. And so actually Indecent is kind of a play about the history of this particular outrageous play, God of Vengeance. Absolutely. It's interesting, the original production of it was a female playwright, Paula Vogel, and a female director. Right. And it really emphasizes this, you know, a point of view of women, although not exclusively. I mean, there's just so much that goes into this play, which um, I think I'm, I want, I think each of you watching this should see both Indecent and see the reading of God of Vengeance, so you know what this is about. And we're offering people a discount on God of Vengeance. You have $3 off your God of Vengeance ticket if you go see Indecent, because we really want people to see them both, so that when you lead the talk back, we have a lot of, of things to discuss. That's fantastic. Perfect. Um, so, you know, one of the things like, oh, it's an old Yiddish play that has one sort of context, but this idea that the script has discusses like religious hypocrisy and prostitution and sexuality and um, homosexuality and and patriarchy it, and the rebellion patriarchy of youth and, and, and you know it's just so chock full of of, of and, themes that are and relevant this, the donna whore complex you've got the virgin and the prostitute and like what how those two things are are valued or devalued absolutely um, it's fabulous. How, how 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 did this how okay, you know what? I think I'll describe to you the first scene of the play to give you some sense. Now, first of all, th keeping in mind, this play was written in 1906. Um, the first production was in 1907. We're talking about more than a hundred years ago. So the very first, um, the first scene, it's this nice traditional Jewish home, the papa probably wearing a kippah in most productions, you know, the, um, the, 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 the mama with the, with the shaitel, with the wig, you know, the virginal daughter uh, Rivkala. And at the very beginning of the play, they are in the process of, um, of the father has commissioned a Torah scroll which he's going to keep in the bedroom of Rivkala, the virgin, Rif, the virginal Rivkala. Um, the idea is that this will bring them good luck. It'll be us prestige in the community. It'll help them find a really good bridegroom for Rivkala and so forth and so on. You know, this kind of like almost stereotypical um, view of a prosperous family. And little by little, it becomes but. clear. But yeah, little by little, it becomes clear that the family business is in the basement, is a brothel. And not only that, but the virginal daughter Rivkala is having an affair with one of the working girls downstairs. Now keep in mind, 
and the mother is a former prostitute. And the, she was the ma the madam, you know. And so, keep in mind, this is 1907. You know, it was wildly popular. I mean, Solom Ash, the playwright, was one of the great. He's one of the great Yiddish authors. Um, um, he, you know, he. He was in Eastern Europe and then eventually came to America and spent the rest of his life in America. Um, he, um, the first production actually was not in Yiddish, but in German in Berlin, but um, there were productions all over the world in all these different languages, including English, including Russian. Um, and, um, but as a Yiddish play, it was just like so incredibly popular. I think in the Lower East Side of New York, it played for years. It was such um, an incredible, incredible play and really, really popular among the Yiddish speaking masses. It's just fascinating. It's yeah. fascinating that, it's fascinating that some of the issues that are in it are still, we haven't moved past them, we haven't, Right. You know, I mean, I think of especially have... today, you know, I mean, the story of the indecent, the play indecent is really about what leads up to this major trial. I mean, um, the play was closed down by the authorities for for obscenity, for indecency. Um, there was a huge trial. It was a cause celeb. There were famous people who were on the side of the production of the play, including Eugene O'Neill, who testifies at the trial. Um, it was a, a huge, huge deal. And so, you know, what happened was that this play was so popular in Yiddish on the Lower East Side that someone said, you know, we should translate this into English and go uptown right. and do it on Broadway. So in 1923, there was a production at the Apollo Theater on 42nd Street, right in the Broadway district, right? And they thought, this has to be, look at how popular it is in Yiddish. And, and it's definitely gonna be a huge success in English, uptown in New York, wow, we can't wait, you know? And then it was closed for indecency. It was, it was and it was a huge, it was a huge cast. And as a matter of fact, I mean, Sholem Ash had actually written a couple of plays before this, but after this, it finished him off. He just was not, he didn't write any more plays. I mean, he was very well known as a novelist, as a short story writer. Um, um, his, a lot of his novels were, I won't go into it because we could go, we could do the whole interview just about Ash, but you know, some of his novels were controversial, but um, this play finished him off actually, as, as far as a, a playwright is concerned. That was a question that came up at the um, community event last night. Somebody said the same thing about hair, that when it was, you know, off off Broadway and playing and, and then it moved uptown and suddenly became this shocking crazy thing. Yeah. A familiar pattern. Yes. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Mm -hmm. Um you know I'm i I'm still sort of intrigued by the idea of why did he write this? Why what what was it he was saying? So I think, you know, he was in, his, so he would have been like of a generation that would be like the children of the famous Yiddish writers like Sholem Aleichem and Yudlamit Peretz. Yudlamit Peretz actually was the famous, you know, um, uh, writer that um, is actually a character in the, in the play Indecent. Um, and so Sholem Ash would have been like, that's the, the age of the children of these great right. writers. And, and he, really felt that there was just too much nostalgia in these in, in the work of these previous people and that he felt that he wanted to represent what the Jews on the street were you know um, he didn't want to cover things up you know so prostitution you know they say prostitution is the oldest profession right so of course it existed in the Jewish and the Yiddish speaking community right. but you know Shah you don't you don't write about that, you know? But he said, no, I, I wanna show people who people are. And this is part of who people are. It, it, might be, it might be unpleasant, it might be tawdry, but you know what? We Jews are not only pure. Uh, and I want, to, I want to write something that is, is, is reflects the reality on the street, um, you know? And, 